In today's episode, we're in the vibrant and colorful city of New Orleans, Louisiana, where award-winning chef and restaurateur Isaac Toops will be showing us his city. New Orleans is so unique and so original, and there's something about this culture that brings you in and locks you in. It entraps you, it entices you, it grabs you. You can be freaky, you can be calm, you can be religious, you can be an atheist, you can be anything you want. I don't care what you want to cook, someone knows how to make it. I don't care what type of thing you can get, this is a poor city, we can get it all. If you'd like to sit down, eat good food, have a drink, conversate with your neighbor, you can be just fine here. A fan favorite on Top Chef, Isaac is often described as the new guard of Cajun cuisine. Cooking is just part of Cajun culture and part of Southern culture. Like everybody does it and I don't care what you do. I was born and raised in South Louisiana. My family traces its roots back for over 300 years, even on my father's side, predating the original origin of the Cajuns. I'm as Cajun as they get, born and raised. I'm gonna take you all on a culinary journey with all the sights, sounds, and smells of South Louisiana. I was job hopping after my college attempt. Didn't work out so well, so I walk into Emeralds Del Monaco. The chef takes a look at me, and he's like, oh, well, I need a guy on fry. Here, you got a job. He took a chance with me, and then I worked my way up through the ranks. I stayed with Emeril Lagasse for 10 years. Me and my wife just got tired of working for other people. I don't mind you know, going there and bust up and getting to work and whatnot, but we wanted to break off and do our own thing and really work for ourselves. If you're gonna kick my butt, I kick my own butt. And so we opened up the meadery and we celebrate 10 years this year. We're kosher salt, venison spice, which is coriander cumin. The meadery is essentially my id. It's a big, bold place of flavors, meats, charcuterie, game, Gulf seafood. I always wanted to bring the flavor without any pretension. The motto here is foie gras and your flip flops, because you can do both. My mom cooks, my uncle cooks, my dad cooks, all my grandparents cook, my brothers and sisters cook. Hog's head cheese, Creole mustard aioli, all of the house-made pickles. I'm basically a pickle nerd. Grilled pickled pineapple, pickled jalapenos, umami pickle. So we're giving the customer the taste and sensation of all the good South Louisiana Cajun cured meats. It's big, it's bad, you know you love it. The meat board. New Orleanians really do live to eat and not the other way around. So we're always looking for new flavors, new ingredients, new chefs. What are you cooking? I wanna know what it is and I wanna taste it. Maui Nola tacos, they're absolutely some of the best tacos I've ever had in my life. They make their own tortillas, they make their own chicharrones, they make their own aqua fresca. We're gonna go see Wilfredo Avalar, lovingly known as Will. Will, soupe. What's going on? Long time no see. What's very typical about New Orleans is finding great food at little hole in the walls. What's not typical is finding that killer of a taco in a weird little strip mall. Awesome, that's New Orleans right there. I don't know if you've been reading lately, but we kind of just got mentioned best tacos in New Orleans. Saw number that. one. Yes. Number Thank one. You, <laughs> you want to try something? Yeah, I want to try something. I got some. a few tacos I want you to try. I'm going to start you off with the birria taco, which is the most popular one. Obviously, if you can, you should make your own tortillas. Right. Right. What we're doing is putting a little bit of mozzarella cheese, which is a nice kind of like melty cheese. And then what I do is I take the braised birria meat. What kind of meat is this? This is brisket. I like brisket just because of the, the flavor it gives off. This is the traditional quesa taco, cheesy taco. Cheesy taco. Cheesy taco, that's the literal translation for it. The oil gives you that nice like kind of red on the outside, which doubles down on the flavor of the brisket. But then what you need to do is on the flat top, kind of like crisp up the tortilla on both sides. Okay. Grab your tacos for you. We like to serve it with the same braising broth. Some of the fresh pico de gallo, I put it on the side, but I also like a little bit in the broth myself. Don't punch me in the face, but this is almost like your French dip, right? That's what I tell everybody. Do it. Just, just dip it? I'm not gonna tell you how to eat it, man, but you have your <laughs> ingredients right there, dude. It's a dippy, it's mm. kind of like- Cheesy. What a, yeah, what a lot of guys do also is they'll do that, 
but they'll also like put some pico inside. Oh, yeah. Bro, like, it's a really fun dish to me, you know? Oh. I do have another thing I want you to try before we go anywhere. All right. All right. You just had the birria taco, but we just got mentioned for this other taco, which was the best Honduran taco in New Orleans. A lot of the ladies that work with us are from Central America, especially from Honduras. And this is one of the dishes that we incorporate on the menu to kind of like highlight them as well. So these are the Honduran tacos. All right. um, you want to give that a try? Yeah. Careful, it's pretty hot. It just it came is? out the fryer. <laughs> Crispy. Chicken on the inside, dressing, pico, pico kind of like little mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, I love it. <laughs> mm. Is that good? My man. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> You're welcome, my love. To Maui Taco. Cheers, man, to you. When I'm in town and I want a steak, I love to go to Crescent City Steak. The atmosphere is just right. Old school, it's very warming. Everybody loves everybody. The drinks are strong, the steaks are big, and the plates are sizzling hot. This is the quintessential classic New Orleans yes, steakhouse. Man. So much history here. Are you a strip or a ribeye man? If I order a ribeye, I'll have to order it with the bone so, in. I, I like the dichotomies. Strip, I think it has a little more flavor, yeah. but the ribeye's got the fat, and the fat rules. I do remember cooking those ribeyes in that broiler, temping them with your fingers, mm -hmm. that hot, like, fat cap on the ribeye burning your fingertips, and then you're sucking it, <laughs> and you're like, oh, man, this is a good steak. This is the worst <clears throat> when we first started cooking, New Orleans had a very pretty much, like, set routine of food. Yeah. There was no room for, like, the things we do now. Yeah. In my brain, it took something like Katrina to happen. Out of the, the destruction came the flowers, that were the newer restaurants and a newer attitude toward dining and cooking. People still wanted to eat good food. It definitely also brought in a lot more influences into what I guess you can say New Orleans cuisine is now. We've always been a port city. Always. It, the city's always been a city of immigrants. Always. I mean, the Cajun and the Creoles have been here for 300 years, then the Vietnamese, Irish, Spanish, French, Swiss. You're all welcome. We are ready to go, man. I'll have the New York strip. I'm gonna do the cowboy ribeye. The sides, the lean ace potatoes. Brabant potatoes. Cream spinach au gratin. And we also need some stuffed mushrooms with our steak. Thank you. I smell it. Oh, yeah. Woo! Is that plate hot? Yes, sir. Before you get into your steak, you gotta try one of these stuffed mushrooms. Oh, man. Crawfish stuffed mushrooms. Mm. So simple, yet so good. Ranch, crawfish, garlic, shallot, mushroom. That tastes like home. Nice and buttery. They don't skimp on the butter. No, you can tell. A lot of restaurants will skimp on the butter. They don't here. No, it's delicious. Tender, the butter elevates the, the flavor of it. Will, it's been great, buddy. Great catching up with you. Had a good meal, had a good cocktail. Dude, thank you. Growing up Cajun, you catch your own crabs, but I've never seen an actual professional crab processing factory. Heading down the river to see Chris Cart, my cousin. We grew up together, cooking whole hogs, fishing, hunting, getting into trouble. You know, catch some crabs, or we're gonna try to catch some crabs. The catching of the crab is never guaranteed, just like a good hunt. I just couldn't believe how much crab they go through at this processing factory. A massive amount of crab. A boatload of crab. Looking good, guys, looking good. Looks like a lot of hard work. It's a lot of brain function. You gotta figure out if they're skinny, you gotta separate size, and you gotta figure out if they're gonna live or not. You get pinched a lot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> how many crabs you go through it? About 30, 40,000 pounds a day. Man. Can you, yeah. spare, uh, can you spare a couple dozen? Oh, yeah, for sure. Cash only, right? Always. <laughs> hey, thank you, guys. No problem, you. man. I'm going to take these crabs down to Margie's Grill, where my good friend Marcus Jacob is going to 
cook him up his way, I'm gonna cook him up my way, and we're gonna see who's the real crab man. It's a good looking crabs, Chris. Yes, indeed. Well, and they're angry too. They feel fat. I'm not reaching in here. They seem all, all kind of angry, but they are yeah. beautiful. Oh yeah, you, you could feel them. Oh yeah, hopefully with some crab roe. You know, my mama likes the crab roe more than she likes the crab meat. Right. You wanna dump them in? Yeah, we can do that. Come on. Crank it. Now we cooking. Season them up, Chris. Yes, indeed. All right, start limiting them. I'm always gonna love boiled crabs, but I tell you what, Marcus may have the next best thing on the planet with his cornmeal fried crabs. Super delicious. What's up, What's man? What's up, bro? How you doing? Good. What's uh, Some I, lemons? I got, I got the burl if you got the fry. I got the fry. Is, is the earl hot? The earl's hot, the burl's going. Never use store-bought lemon juice. Gotta use the fresh stuff. About how long do you normally let them sit in this? About 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah. What you got going on? All right, we got some live blue crabs. and just cleaned them and cut them up. We're gonna dredge them and we're gonna fry them. Take it out your way. And then you toss in our chili butter. What's in your dredge? Dredge is cornmeal, heirloom cornmeal, corn flour, all-purpose flour, custom seafood seasoning blend. Okay. Bunch of other stuff. Bunch of other stuff? Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, that stuff. It's stuff, yeah, you know, good stuff, tasty stuff. Isaac, take those crabs cut up there, put them in this flour for me, please. Got it. Flour, egg wash with hot sauce in it. Okay. All right, so I'm doing the old classic South Louisiana Cajun crawfish bowl. Mm -hmm. You're doing something a little different. Walk me through with the flavor difference. Someone, I just steam it out over there. Mm -hmm. Mine's just in a deep fryer. Gotcha. You get these really nice crispy bits on the outside of the meat get covered with our chili sauce and butter and lime and herbs and it's still like you still pick them like a boiled crab right but it just adds a little bit more like caramelization and fried flavor in it you can eat the little toes off of them I do these little yeah. toes. <laughs> crispy toes crispy toes all right so egg into our dredge it's just different strokes you know it doesn't dilute the flavor of the crab in the water mm -hmm. same like with boiled it only really works if you're using fresh live Crab. Blue crab. Would this be something you would have gotten less so from Louisiana and more pulled from other cultures? Or? This is like a Beaumont, Texas thing. That's about how long you normally let that fry for? About five or six minutes okay. until it gets crispy on the outside. And you know, this will keep cooking as we take it out. Sure. And really what you're going for is crispy outside and like tender, steamy meat on the inside. Right. Almost done. Look at that, crispy, brown. You're making me hungry. All right, All so right. there we're gonna go with our lemongrass butter right here. All right. And that's gonna kind of melt on top in here. Give that a little swish around. This is a custom blend we get made for us. It's got a lot of orange peel and lemon oh, you, peel you in it. Oh, you smell it. Yeah. yeah. Chilies and onion? Yeah, that's green onion right there. Some fresh cilantro and then we're gonna hit it with that little mixture of fish sauce and lime juice. So when we plate these, we plate the helmet up so you can get in on that fat and just a nice pile like that. Can I eat now? Get on. Oh. Yeah. Okay, let's switch. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's yes, a good indeed. bowl. Don't, don't tell my daddy. Mm. <laughs> Man. The, the meat is just as tender yeah. as if you'd have boiled them. Yeah. I don't even know what I just ate. <laughs> so like, whatever that was. Yeah. Like, what's, what's this? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> mm. I grab the legs. All right. And then I grab the carpus with my other two fingers. Pry it open. Drink all the juice. You know, Marcus, I like the traditional method, but I think I like yours more. This is just downright delicious. Marcus, I can't thank you enough. Appreciate you showing me the method. Chris, let's get out of here. Yes, <laughs> New Orleans is a magical place, and I've been all over, and there's no place like it, no place on earth that I know of. When you get here, I got here 20 years ago, uh, it, it traps you. you. You don't want to leave, and there's no reason to leave. There's everything you can want here. All the neighborhoods in New Orleans are fantastic in different ways. You have Uptown and the Lower Garden District, which have beautiful homes and wonderful structures. You have the Central Business District, where the high rises, and you can see all the hustling and bustling of the city folk. 
And then there's the French Quarter with all the tourism and all the lights and all, and all the sights and all the smells and all the sounds. And then you have Frenchman Street where the adults go to play and the uh, locals go to listen to music. And you have all these other places that everybody lives and you can go there for different reasons. You know, the wonderful thing about New Orleans is you can break out and do your own thing. And if the food's good, people will flock to you. That's where we're going to St. Germain. These guys are doing modern forward cooking using fresh ingredients, very smart plate ups, wonderful wine lists. They really got their thing going. You can tell they're passionate about it because it comes through with the flavor. How you doing, Chef? Okay. Welcome. Congratulations welcome. on the nomination, by the it's way, you guys. Too. You too. You too. Welcome, welcome. What you got for me? So here we have a little salad that we've made with loquats from our tree in the backyard. And we just gently ferment them, pair them with a little cherries, some Roquefort blue cheese, the juice from the fermented loquats, and fermented tomato with a little lovage. We make this vinaigrette. Made with lovage. That's it. I love made it. With made with lovage. That's made awesome. Lovage. <laughs> Guys, thank you. Thank this, you. This is a treat. Thank you. Ooh. Smells of like umami, almost like a soy. A little bit of briny. Mmm. The loquats have this uh, burst of sweetness and sourness. This is really well designed. I wish there was more of this. Perfect first course. Well, the current contemporary scene in New Orleans is very much about the ingredients and about like getting out of your comfort zone and really leaning toward different styles, different ingredients. All right, chef. Got something else for you here. Well, if it's anything like the first bite, it was amazing. <laughs> we braise a little mustard greens and green garlic. On top, we've just done a little sauce with preserved tomato, a little bit of fresh pork sausage, and just some uh, semolina gnocchietti. Well, delicious so far. And shockingly, what I didn't expect is how light this is. Yeah. This isn't a big, heavy, sogging. You get all those little notes. Super innovative, guys. I'm loving this. I'll try to still make it nostalgic, yeah. though. You know, yeah. it kind of just reminds. It's, it's, I'm telling you, if you just blindly serve this, it's like, oh, it's grandmother's pasta. Sure thing. And then you get going on it, and it's like, oh, all right. This is delicious, no lie. Here, it, we just try to keep it like nice and simple. We make it about the food, and it's just, you know, we're just having fun doing it, you know? Right. Like, we kind of just made it to where it's like that. So we enjoy coming to work every day, and people like working here. You guys are killing it so far, obviously. To do a tasting menu in New Orleans only is pretty bold statement there. And then to reinvent classics like this and to really get out the box shows that these guys and gals are just on point and they're doing what they love and they're doing it on purpose and they're just rocking it. Ooh, dessert? dessert. Or does it just look like dessert? <laughs> This is inspired by a Liege waffle. It has the pearl sugar on top. The side is an aerated caramel with uh, just some like frozen uh, chocolate grated over the top. Pick up the waffle and then use the spoon to kind of spread the caramel on each bite. That way you don't lose the aeration. Oh, oh, oh you thought of every step. Is this about right? That's it, yeah. that's it. And if you want to put more on as you go, you can. Super sort of light in texture and the idea that you can kind of control the sweetness because the waffle itself is not really that sweet. You like it? Sweet, not too sweet. Nice and light. Your textures across the board, honestly, are like on point. We haven't done the waffle in probably a year. You know, let's let's do the waffle this month. My only comment would be, can I have six more? Of course, <laughs> yes. Mmm. Fantastic, guys. My first attraction to making food is, is kind of hard to nail down. You're always cooking, you're always helping out. So when you're a kid, you know, they hand you the host pipe to fill up the crawfish pot, or you help bring plates of the large platters of food to the table. We're going to Classy's Boil House, and my kids absolutely love crawfish. They like to put them on their fingers, they like it when I peel them for them. But growing up Cajun, if you get your crawfish peeled for you, you're a bebe or a baby. So when you grow up, you got to peel your own crawfish. And my kids know how to peel some crawfish because they like to eat some crawfish. Oh, look at the crawfish. Oh, you want a whole one? Yeah, I want a whole one. <laughs> this is daddy's one of favorite things to eat. You know that? So the way you cook crawfish is you season up some water, you bring it to a boil, you boil them in that good water till they're cooked, and then you put them in an ice chest and you hit them with lemon juice, vinegar, and season it and let them suck all that good juices up. Why don't we eat some crawfish? Yeah.
All right, let's go. Come on. You know, it's wonderful to pass the torch. I used to eat crawfish with my dad, and I still do. But he would show me how to peel crawfish, and I show my daughters how to peel crawfish, and they'll show their children how to peel crawfish. It's a point of Cajun pride. The corn a little bit better. Ooh, what do y'all say? Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so watch this, Jelly. You take it apart, you pinch the head. You suck the juices out the head, peel the top layer off, you pinch the back of the tail from underneath, and then you pop it in your mouth. I forgot what to do. <laughs> Good? The corn's spicy. I know it's spicy. <laughs> Mama's coming. We should have thought about this. Quick work, kids. Quick work, right? New Orleans is and always will be a city of immigrants. All the neighborhoods in New Orleans are fantastic in different ways. Long time no see. My favorite thing personally is always the food. I like to eat first and then I like to cook food second. And you can do both all over this city with reckless abandon. There's good food everywhere else and there's great culture everywhere else, but there's something specific, the, the really love of life in New Orleans.